Hi everybody, welcome back to Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie Reviews. I'm Daniela. I'm John. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm yeah. still sick. We're getting there. Uh, you know, it's, it's back to cold here again. I already had to cover up our uh, I don't like this extreme early garden. temperature stuff. My body's just like not happy. No, it doesn't like that. Anyway. Uh, however, the Leafs are playing their first playoff game today. That's when I'm wearing my jersey. Yes, yes. Against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So go Leafs, go. Very exciting. Uh, we are back with another Spring Into Love movie. Oi, oi, oi. Yes. Next up we have A Professional Bridesmaid. Chewy. This stars Hunter King and Chandler Massey. So, I don't know, Hunter King I would say is usually likable for the most part, but she's never really the standout for me. And same as Chandler Massey, so when these two are the leads, it's really gonna take a great story, memorable characters to pull something at least decent off, in my opinion. So I wasn't too excited when I saw the previews for this one. Too Fair honest. enough. Yeah. Well, let's get into this one. Yeah. What is it about? When a professional bridesmaid books a high profile wedding, she must keep her true identity a secret, not only from the wedding party, but also from the handsome reporter covering the event. Ah. So what do we think of this one? So, okay. Do we actually have a whole movie based on a big misunderstanding on this one? Feels like a while since we've had that. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, okay, I did miss that, so that was fun. Definitely. But... <sighs> this was not good. <laughs> this was not good. Oh boy, okay, so first off, when are we going to have a movie that shows the two leads meeting in any other way aside from literally crashing into one another? Oh no, look out! I mean, you know, it, it's, it's possible. Been done. It's of course it's been done, but it also Too, happens. It's been overdone. I'm sure, yeah, it's definitely been overdone. Almost and all it, encounters are and done it happens, this way. I think it happens twice in this movie too. Oh, oh my God! Oh. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's almost all encounters happen this way. And I'm just gonna say it. Uh, it's becoming like my trademark here, but it's just lazy, lazy writing. writing. It is, that it is. is. Okay, and aside from that, a bigger issue, and something I had a hard time wrapping my head around, is what it is exactly that Maggie did for a living. Like, really. Like, a professional bridesmaid, to my understanding, is kind of like a wedding planner, but you know they deal more with the emotional and social dynamics within the bridal party, so it's a little bit more of an intimate role. But I mean, okay, like, is that really needed? I mean, I guess if you have the budget, and sure, you know, why not? If you're rich, sure, if you can afford it. it but in this case, it just seemed more of a hassle here, and I think the fact that she had to keep her identity hidden added to that stress. It just seemed like something else to have to worry about on top of all the other stress that comes with planning a wedding. Yeah, all the other wedding stress. Yeah, I think the main thing this movie failed at was trying to cram so many little plot points and twists yes. into an otherwise, like, forgettable setup. But I will say, I don't have any problem with what Hunter's character did for a living. If anything, I thought that was the most interesting thing about the movie. They just didn't explain it very well. Okay. I believe that having a secret bridesmaid who is also a part planner makes complete sense for a lot of situations. Sometimes the bride doesn't have many or any friends. Or so then they, they pretend were such a bride. to be your friend? Yeah, I don't know, that's can, weird. People hire sit-ins for stuff that are way less weird than that. Okay. I think that the writing and the overall story was just very weak. I feel like I could feel that they were trying to take a basic, pretty formulaic story and try to throw a bunch of other storylines in it in an attempt to make it feel different or new, and I think it failed here. Like throwing weak storylines and weak structure and even a weak source of conflict, even weak tension, doesn't help an already stale story. Agreed. Well, why don't we get to performances then? <sighs> this will be tough here. You know, like, Again, I just didn't find any of the leads interesting or particularly great, to be honest. I don't know, I hate to say it. I think the standout for me here was maybe the bride. And that's really reaching. I had to really dig deep to find someone that I really liked. So the bride, Alexis, um, played by Francesca Bianchi. I felt her sadness and I felt her stress. She wasn't made out to be like a bridezilla, which I liked and appreciated. She had concerns and certain preferences, of course, like every bride would, but she was never over the top, so I liked that. Yeah, I, I like her, but mainly just to look at. <laughs> we've definitely, okay, seen, well, her as, pretty, we, we've like, definitely seen her as a side character in other Hallmark films, but she doesn't bring a lot of excitement to the screen, so I definitely can't say 
that she was a standout no, for me. No, I mean, I was digging uh, there, but... I, you know, I mean, I will definitely say that Hunter King is a standout for me here, okay. even though I didn't like the movie. She's come a long way in terms of fitting into, like, the Hallmark mold. Mm -hmm. Like, she was kind of tomboyish in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Granted, I did not like her last two movies, <laughs> no. but she's softened up a lot since Hidden Gems. And yeah. I thought her performance shined through the haze of mediocrity here, even right. just a bit. Yeah, I, I agree. I do agree. Why don't we get to nitpicky hit picky? No. So a nitpicky, the realization flashback, which is what we've coined it as. You know, I've come to learn as a filmmaker that flashback scenes very rarely work and should be used very sparingly. And this one just looked really bad. Not only that, it's not like the misunderstanding was this like big, serious like mystery that warranted a few fast cuts of flashback. Like one of the flashback scenes was the article that said Maisie was Alexis's horse. I know. And it made it seem like so dark and mysterious. And Maisie? Like, oh my god, um, so all the wine flubs that Maggie said, like Shiraz and Shirat is like the same, the same grape thing, yeah. or whatever. I'm more of a Shirat person myself. Shirat and Shiraz are the same grape. Like, I just don't think it warranted like a usual suspects kind of flashback. And that's what they tried to do here and it seemed silly. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And they definitely structured <laughs> it like the end of usual suspects. Like, yeah. You're gonna come off even worse. That type of flashback worked once and only once yeah. in the usual suspects. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> you obvious. You have seen that, have you? Oh, of course. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought you hadn't seen that movie. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, Nit, mm. how do you f up a wedding movie? Wedding movies are easy. It's always just it's generally. Like, just generally, especially a wedding movie with so much wedding planning. Like I love wedding movies. It's probably my favorite side genre in these Hallmark movies. Yeah, you I do. I loved a very merry bridesmaid, which I yeah. think played at the exact same time last year. No, uh, I think that was Christmas. Wasn't that a Christmas one? Because they got married during Christmas. Was it? Oh, maybe it was. I think I, so. Oh, you know what? That one might have actually been like Christmas from July or something. Maybe. I remember it being sort maybe. of in the summer. We'll have to double check. A professional bridesmaid tried to fit into that mold, but eventually leaked out all the sides within the first 30 minutes of confusion. <laughs> Thank God that this bad wedding fiasco was immediately made up for the following weekend. You're welcome. Which we'll get to in the next mm, review. <laughs> yes. One other nitpicky that I forgot to mention was that for a professional bridesmaid who must go undercover for this very high profile client, she didn't really take the time to prep her cover story as a wine distributor. I mean, she knew absolutely nothing about wine. But she also didn't even have a fake name of the winery in her back pocket. All I'm saying is that if it were me, and I was hired by the mayor to make his daughter's wedding the best it could be, and even if the bride just sprung up the whole undercover story on you, I would be cramming about wine the whole night before. Or, okay, take the whole wine aspect away. At the very least, make sure you have your story of how you met the bride down pat. They both fumbled on that aspect, and I mean, at the bare minimum, have that covered. She is a professional bridesmaid after all, whatever that is. Okay, a hit. Why don't we do a hit? Casey Marsden. Yeah, always he's, a hit. He's always a hit. He plays it so well. Yes. Yes, he is nice. Just keep him focused on the wedding and away from the mayor. It's not really part of my job. Isn't it? <laughs> not sure if that's a compliment or not, but he's always kind of like a side character, which is a bit of a nit, actually. It, uh, the hit is to see him, but the nit is I'd like to see him not as a side character, like in every single movie. Me too, but that is where he fits. Honestly, he would technically be the performance standout for me now that I'm thinking of it. <laughs> because yeah, that's true. The man has perfected the creepy, socially awkward character. Didn't we turn one of those scenes into like a horror movie? Was oh, it with yeah. him? It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, yeah. It was oh in, my god, that's um, so funny. Uh, he's always a treat to watch, though, because he plays the part very well. But I am curious <laughs> to see him in a normal role eventually. I'm not sure, you know. He definitely has the chops to pull it off. Probably. I actually could see him as a really sweet, tender, vulnerable, loving man. Yeah, for sure. Or role, even just like, right? yeah, in like a nerdy role or something. Like, he, yeah, he or can, a nerdy tech guy. Off. I mean, the only normal role we've seen him in was when he was the, uh, the newscaster. The news anchor, yeah, yeah. And even then he was kind of odd. <laughs> so. Yeah, he was. He's funny, but, though, but we like to see him. Yeah, we like He's him. got a good face. Uh, why don't we get to the writer and the director? 
director. Sure. The director here is Peter Benson. Oh, yeah. Lots of acting credits here, but some other directing credits include When I Think of Christmas, The Weddingdale Expectations, huge, The Santa Stakeout, Paul Campbell, love yeah, that, yeah. and Time for Them to Come Home for Christmas. Oh, you gave an extra one. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, <laughs> especially for that one, because that title's way too long. <laughs> uh, and there are three writers credited here. <laughs> Three. For this. I, you know, Why? More cooks in the kitchen don't make a better meal. No, no. Okay, so the first writer here is Carol Starr Schneider. Some other credits include When Sparks Fly, Spring Fling, and one episode of Who's the Boss? Oh, I didn't see any Hallmark credits though. There's no, no Hallmark credits there. Uh, the other writer is Brian Sawyer. Some other credits include Santa Stakeout, uh, Christmas in Rome with Lacey. I love that one, actually. Oh, yeah. And Operation Christmas Drop. Oh, yeah. All and the, fun. And the last writer here is Greg Rawson. Some other credits include The Winter Palace, mm -hmm. The Santa Stakeout, and Christmas in Rome. I guess I guess there, there might be like a writing, a writing team, which makes sense. Yeah, too. yeah. But yeah, this one definitely felt like it, it was being pulled from different ends. Like people wanted to do different things and it kind of shone through. Sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so was this a hit or a miss? Did this hit or miss the hallmark for you? Definite miss. Hard miss. Hard miss. Yeah, this, this was good. this was a miss for me too. <coughs> Not good. Uh, I wanted a I wanted a fun wedding movie, and I, just, I remember you saying to me, "Is this over yet?" Yeah, it's never a good sign. I think I want to. Go Unfortunately, or always hate to get bad reviews. <laughs> we know what goes into it, as we've said. Yeah, but, of course, but you know they yeah. can't they can't always win. Um, but Spring into Love has been failing overall, generally speaking. It's been failing so far this year for me, for yeah. me personally. Yeah, I'm excited to do the next review because I, I feel Thank like that Thank goodness. One was, I feel like that one was definitely... Hint. hint. It's looking up. <laughs> it's looking up. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, um, why don't we get to our Hallmark uh, checklist? Bring it down. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, promotion or deadline? Well, for the for Chandler's character, yes. Yeah, well, they also have a wedding deadline. <clears throat> That's true, too. Oh my gosh. Career-driven lead? I would say yes. Yes, both. for sure. Uh, big misunderstanding. Of course. Totally. Whole thing. Whole damn thing. <laughs> Change of heart. Yes. Never not. Yeah. Someone gets dumped, fired, or dies. No. no. Second romance subplot. Yes, we have a wedding here, so yeah. the couple getting wow. married. Wonder what hockey team he played for. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, oh my dog. god. I was reading people on Facebook. How how on Facebook. well suited this is then. I know, eh? right? Let's go. Wow. <laughs> I was reading stuff on Facebook and people were like, well, well, why wouldn't he be involved at all? I'm like, he's in the playoffs. Like, <laughs> they true. mentioned it at the beginning yeah. of the movie. Oh my God. Uh, proposal or a wedding, definitely. Of course. Which is always fun to see. Yeah. Uh, travel issues. No, I don't think so. Hey, bye. Selling the house, business, or farm. Negatory. No, no, no. The big city to small <laughs> town transition. Sorry, I keep coughing. I know it's completely rude of me, but I can't help it. Uh, I said. <laughs> I mean, and I try to cover my mouth sometimes, but I'm sorry. it's only you. <laughs> uh, yes, right? Big city, small town? I mean, they went, was it no, a small I, town I, that no, they went no, to? No, they, were, they were just in the city the whole time. Oh, were they? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it it's seemed a, like the it was a, it's a, it's the mayor's daughter's wedding. They wouldn't held it outside of the city. Well, like a country estate. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, they, they, they never mentioned it. wasn't it. very if clear. If they did, it wasn't very clear. Okay. Uh, they almost kissed. I don't no. think so. There, I think there was a close one, though. Oh, no, maybe. I don't think so. Um, okay. Mad Dash. Let's go get her. No. No, they were just at the wedding. Yeah. I mean, and awkwardly, like, standing by the table, looking down, wondering if he'll <laughs> talk to me and forgive me for pretending to be somebody else. Stupid. Dumb. Dumb. Anyways, let us know what you thought of this. Did it hit or miss the hallmark for you? Yes, let us know in the comments below. And who's going to win tonight's game? The least. Oh. Is anyone else Canadian out there? Like, yeah, let us know. Followers? I mean, yeah. hey, let us know if there's any Tampa Bay fans. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll hear you out. That, that's who they're playing against. Um, yeah, and they, they won the comp last year, so it's a big deal. Whoa. Thanks um, again, everybody. And we'll see you back in a few days for the review of The Wedding Cottage. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yep, and, and click the little bell to receive notifications. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.